Croquettes, a little bit of an old classic, severely underrated these days. I wanted to bring them back and show you a recipe that I enjoy most and what I like about these. And in this recipe, I'm gonna run you through a couple of tips and tricks to get the most flavor out of your ingredients, especially when it comes to the potato on these. Let's get straight into it. Now for this recipe, we do need six all-rounder potatoes or anything with a high starch content, such as Yukon Gold or Desiree. Place them into a bowl with one tablespoon of olive oil, season to taste with salt and cracked black pepper. 10 cracks worth. Then just give these a quick mix around until completely covered in the salt, pepper and oil. And it is a little bit awkward doing it in a bowl, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, usually with croquettes or mashed potato, people just boil the potatoes, which are washing out nutrition and flavor. What we're going to do is salt bake them. And I haven't weighed out the amount of salt that I used here. I just poured enough rock salt to cover the bottom of a baking tray and enough to be able to hold six potatoes. Once you have it spread out, lay the potatoes down. Just keep a little bit of a gap. You can fork poke the potatoes a little bit as well. And what this is going to do is it's going to draw moisture out of the potato and allow that skin to become so crispy. But inside, the center is going to become extremely fluffy and hold in all of that flavor. And it's also going to dry it out, which is going to be perfect for our croquettes. In the meantime, we can make our mayonnaise. What I've got here is one whole egg going into a tool jar or container. If you're worried about raw egg, use pasteurized. If not, don't make this and just use store-bought. And along with that egg is 15 milliliters of white vinegar, 10 grams of Dijon mustard, and 150 milliliters of neutral oil, salt, and cracked black pepper, five cracks worth. Then get in there with an immersion blender and blitz this up until it emulsifies and becomes our basic mayonnaise. To this now, we can add in 15 grams of dill and 10 grams of flat leaf parsley. Get back in there with the immersion blender. Blitz this up until it's a nice pale green color. It smells fantastic. All of that fragrance is going to infuse into the mayonnaise. Then we can transfer it over to a serving jar or dish. And that right there is our herby mayonnaise. It's perfect for so many different things, not just croquettes. And this can be stored in the fridge until we're ready to serve. Moving on, I'm using 200 grams or seven ounces of streaky bacon. This comes from the belly of the pig, not the back. You can use back bacon if you wanted to. And all we're going to do is just dice this into small to medium sized pieces. I like to stack it up, create strips, then rotate that 90 degrees and then dice into those pieces. This is going to get the most consistent cut. Next is one spring onion or scallion. Thinly slice this the whole way across. If you don't want to go out and buy a whole bunch of these for this one single use, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. But I just had a couple spare lying around and it adds a great flavor into our potatoes. Now going back to the potatoes, carefully remove them from the oven. A little bit of steam will come out, so just be careful of that. And allow these to cool down until they're cool enough for us to handle and squeeze so we don't burn ourselves. Whilst we're waiting for the potatoes to cool, what I have here is 100 grams of mozzarella cheese and 50 grams of sharp cheddar. Run both of these along the larger side of a box grater just to shred them up and give them a little mix just to combine the two cheeses. Let's then place a pan over a medium high heat. Add in the bacon whilst the pan is still cold. We don't need to add any oil either because we're going to allow the bacon to render its fat and cook itself in its own fat. All we're going to do is cook this for about three to four minutes over that medium high heat. We don't want to cook it too much because it will dry out and everyone has a different preference of how they like their bacon, but I do recommend undercooking this slightly because it will continue to cook whilst it cools down. When the potatoes are cool enough to handle, scrape off any salt that may be stuck to them and we can reuse this salt, so don't throw it in the bin. You can either use it again for baked potatoes or you can actually blitz this up and use it as a seasoning. It's not going to affect any of the flavor and I recommend storing this in a tight container away from any moisture or air. We are making mashed potatoes and the skins are still on these potatoes, so I recommend slicing them in half. And you can see in the inside, they're really nice and dry. They're soft and fluffy and that skin is crispy. We can just continue slicing these in half until you have all of them done. Then what we're going to do is place the half flat side into a ricer or into a bowl and just push these down to get them out of the skin. If you like skin in your mashed potato, it's completely fine to leave them in. And also don't throw the skins in the bin. You can put these in the oven, crisp them up and have little crispy potato bits. If you don't want to do that, you can just eat the potato skins whilst you're doing this recipe. Now that the potatoes are in the bowl, they're mashed up and they're nice and fluffy. We can add in the bacon along with all of the fat. Add in both cheeses that we grated. And I forgot to mention before, you can use any cheese that's good at melting of your choice. Add in all of the spring onion or scallion if you're choosing to use that, as well as one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of whole fat milk. Season it well with salt and cracked black pepper, 20 cracks worth. Then mix this all together until everything's combined. It's all consistent throughout. There's no bits of one ingredient that have clumped up anywhere. Thing. Then what I'm doing here is probably a little bit overkill. I'm actually weighing the whole amount. That way I can get a consistent amount of balls and we're going to divide this by however many you like. 
the whole amount of the ingredients ended up being 960 grams and I divided it by 16 which works out to be about 60 grams per ball. I only do this for consistency that way you can get in the same size for each one and they cook at the same time as well but you don't have to do it if you don't want to you can just eyeball it. Once you have them rolled out, I do recommend smoothing them out a little bit more. Just make sure they're a little bit compact. You don't have to squeeze them too tight, just as long as they hold themselves together. And you can shape these into anything you like. Traditionally, they are in a cylinder log, but I like to roll them out into balls. Just before we get cooking, add four whole eggs into a bowl and break these up with either a whisk or a fork. And this is going to be used for our crumbing. Into a separate bowl or tray, add in the flour. I'm using about one cup of plain all-purpose flour. You can use a little bit more. It's better to have too much than not enough here. And in another tray or bowl, add in the panko breadcrumbs. And I'm using about two cups worth. And you can use fine breadcrumbs if you wanted to, but panko work better for this recipe. Let's now add our croquettes into the flour, dust them really well and shake off any excess flour. Then we can place these into the egg wash. Again, make sure you mix it really well. There can be a little bit of air pockets sometimes that form and you won't actually coat it fully. So make sure you're aware of that. Then from the egg wash into the panko breadcrumbs or the fine breadcrumbs and dust these really well, ensuring they're fully coated. You can add a little bit of pressure. Just be careful you don't reshape the balls or whatever shape you've decided to make these. And if you find that the panko breadcrumbs do start to get a little bit wet, I do recommend adding more. But with all of that done, what you should have is a croquette that looks like this and it's ready to go. As for cooking these, I am frying them. You can use an air fryer and you can use an oven. And the oil I'm using for this one is sunflower oil, but you can also use vegetable oil or safflower oil. We do also want to heat it to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And once hot, we're going to allow our balls to drop into the oil, place them away from yourself so the oil doesn't splash back. And you should be able to get most of them into the pot. If you can't, you just make sure you do this in batches, otherwise you'll cool the oil down too much and our croquettes will become soggy. And then just fry these for about three to four minutes, gently mixing them around so they get color all over. Make sure they're not sticking out on the top of the oil. Then carefully remove them from the oil and place them over a wire rack to drain. And we can season them with a little bit of salt straight out of the fryer oil. That way it will stick and get that nice seasoning all over. And once you have all of that done, you should have something that looks like this. Beautiful golden brown, crispy, crunchy croquette. When you're ready to serve up, don't forget that we made Herbie Mayo and leave it in the fridge for a couple of weeks. Then wonder why that's in there. Place the croquettes around the sauce, makes it so much easier. Life's a bit hard when you have to move your fingers a couple of inches further to get to the sauce. But what we've created here is these crispy croquettes. They look incredible. And when we break them up, you should get that beautiful cheese string pull. And these smell incredible as well. These really are the perfect snack for any occasion. With everything said and done, there is only one thing left to do. And that is, of course, we can then dig in.